All right, so in today's video, we're gonna be looking at how to add multiplayer to this basic platformer we have here. If you're wondering how I got to this point, you can check out the first part of the series. However, if you don't really wanna follow along and you just wanna know how to add multiplayer to your platformer, this will probably work for you as well. So we're gonna be using Godot's uh, high-level multiplayer API for this. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is add a new node. This will be a canvas layer. We're gonna set up some UI elements going to rename it to UI. Then to here, I'm going to add a control node, rename it to multiplayer. Then I'm going to add a VBox container to organize these all vertically. And then from there, a uh, label for a title, then a button. This will be called a uh, host. Then I'm going to duplicate this, call this one join, and rename this to title. Um, you can put whatever you want here. I'm just gonna put multiplayer arena shooter. Then in host, we can just put host join can just be join. All right, cool. So we now have a little bit of a UI set up. I do wanna center this though. That way it looks a little bit nicer. So to do that, um, we need to make sure that this multiplayer control node is full size. Then the VBox container, we can just center it uh, using that anchor right there. All right, with that done, we can run this and see our little UI set up here. It's not the greatest, but we're gonna change this in the future uh, when we look at adding uh, no ray support to our game. So the next thing I wanna do is add a script to our game node, and I'm just gonna delete everything in here. Now, the first thing I wanna do is set up uh, hosting and joining. So I'm going to go ahead and connect these two buttons to our game script. And do the same for the join button. All right, so the first thing I want to do up here is make a variable called peer. And I'm going to set this to enet multiplayer peer dot new. Then all we have to do when we press the host button is make the, the server. So what I'm going to do is say peer dot create server and then it needs a port i'm just going to put uh 25565 it doesn't really matter what you pick so long as it's a large number um then the next thing you want to do is go ahead and set the global multiplayer peer to this peer that we just made then to join we're going to do the same thing so i'm just going to copy and paste and then rather than create server we're going to create client this will take a address i'm just put going to put localhost in here for now and again 25565 for the port it does have to match the server's port um, or else this won't work all right so now if we were to run this you can see we only have one window so it's kind of hard to test this out so to fix that what we can do is go to debug customize run instances and change this to two and there we go just close out this window and now when you run this you should see that two windows appear so if I host on the left and join on the right, you can see nothing really happens, but it is working. And just to make sure that it is, we can actually connect the signal that goes off whenever um, a player joins the server. So what we can do is multiplayer.peer connected and then connect us to a Lambda function. And then this function is gonna take in a peer ID. I'm just gonna use PID for short. Then I'm just going to print out uh, peer, uh, peer ID has joined the game. Now when we run this and I host on the left and join on the right, you can see peer and then their peer ID has joined the game. So this is now working. Okay, so now that we have hosting and joining set up, the next thing we need to do is set up um, spawning in players for the host and all the clients that join. So to do this is pretty simple. I'm just gonna make a function down here, function add player. And then all this is going to do is just instantiate a player. So what I need now is actually a reference to the player scene. So I'm gonna come up to the top and make a constant player variable. This will be equal to preload uh, and then that player.tscn. Then down here, we're going to go ahead and make a variable player is equal to player.instantiate. 
then we can just add child player. Now, when we host the game, we need to make a player for the host, obviously. So I'm going to come down here, add player. And then whenever a peer connects, we also want to make a player for them. So we're going to put add player in here as well. Now, I actually want to go ahead and delete this player that's already in the scene because we're going to just be relying on the script to spawn them in for us. So delete that node there so no players are in our scene. And if I once again host on the left and join on the right, you can see the host, both players spawn in, but we're not seeing any players on the client. So how do we fix that? Well, there's a handy little node called the multiplayer spawner node. This basically will synchronize spawned in nodes across the network. So any node that is spawned in on the server will also appear on all the clients, which is exactly what we want. So to set this up, we're going to come to the game node and add in a multiplayer spawner. And this does require a little bit of setup here. Um, the first property is the spawn path. This is the path that this node will watch. In other words, uh, if we assign, uh, let's say, the tile map layer, it'll check to see if any children are added to the tile map layer. And if they are, then it'll replicate that to all the clients. Uh, in this case, we want to just check if they're added as a child of the game node since that's where we are adding in our players and then the next thing we want to check is the auto spawn list so basically what this is saying is any scene that is in this list will automatically be spawned in we want to obviously spawn in the player so we add the player to that list with that done if we run the game and host on the left join on the right you can see only one of the players are appearing but that is some progress in the right direction so we do get an error here and it's about the naming of the uh, player node so what i want to do is actually set the player's name to the peer id what i'm going to do is in the add player function i'm going to add in a parameter here for the peer id then when we add the call this function we just had to put peer id here and then here we want to get the peer ID of the host. Now the host should always be one, but another way to get the peer ID is to do multiplayer.get unique ID. Now the next thing I want to do is set the uh, player's name. So player.name is equal to string peer ID. If I host on the left, join on the right, you can see both players appeared for a second and then they fell off the screen. That's because they were colliding with each other. So the next thing I want to do is go over how to synchronize positions over the network uh, for the player here. So I'm going to come to the player scene, and there's a very handy node. This makes everything so much simpler. Uh, it's called the multiplayer synchronizer node. So if we come to the player and add this node, multiplayer synchronizer, what we can do is add properties that we want to sync over the network. So if we come to the bottom tab here under replication, add property to sync, you can select the player and synchronize the position property. And with that done, the player's position will now be synchronized over the network. And if we run this, we can host on the left, join on the right. You can see the players are now synced up and they look the same on each side. If we move on the host, you can see it's being synchronized, but we can control uh, both players. And if we try to move on the client, nothing happens. So this is where something called multiplayer authority comes in. Basically we want to say who can control which player. What we can do is in the player scene when we enter the tree we want to set the multiplayer authority of this node. If you remember correctly we actually um, set the client's peer ID to the player's name so we can just do a string or I'm sorry int string name. Um, so basically what we're doing here is we're taking the name, converting it to a string, then converting it to an integer. Um, set multiplayer authority takes in the peer ID of um, the client who you want to control it. Now that we know who the authority is, we want to make sure that only the authority can control the player. So what we can do in here is just say if not is multiplayer authority, then return. That way none of this code will get ran if we're not supposed to be controlling it. If we run this game again, again hosting on the left, joining on the right, everything seems to work perfectly fine now. 
you will get an error and some weird things will appear if you uh, press the space bar because of this UI that is in our way. So to fix that, what I'm going to do is come into the game scene or script, then I'm going to add an on ready variable. This will be, um, we'll call it multiplayer UI. And then this will just be set equal to the path to our multiplayer control node. And then all we're going to do is just, after we press the host button, we'll just hide uh, the UI. That way it's not in our way anymore. And we'll do the same when we press the join button. So now if I press host, uh, the menu disappears and it's no longer interfering whenever we press the space bar. Now you will see that the player sometimes falls off the screen. Um, and to fix that, what we can do here, I'm just going to temporarily uh, come to our tile map and make sure that there's a tile under uh, this section right here. That way that no longer happens. And there we go. Everything's working. We have now synchronized movement. The next step from here is we're going to look at how to add in a gun and projectiles. Uh, we're also going to look at how to add in uh, different spawn points around the map that way we're not spawning on top of each other one other thing I want to do in the player scene before we finish out this episode is come to the player node and then under collision layer we can change this from one to two and now if we run this you'll see that players uh, no longer collide with each other which I think is a little bit nicer the next thing I want to do is change the color of the player if they're not uh, you know if they're not the controlling player if that makes sense. So in other words, all the other players apart from you will be red. So what we can do is in the ready function of our player script is say, if not is multiplayer authority, then we can just do sprite 2d dot uh, modulate and set that to color dot red. And now if, if, if we run this, who's on the left, join on the right, you can see now the host on this is the white square, and you can see it makes it a little bit easier to tell who's controlling who. Um, so that's the enemy player, as you can see there. In the next episode, we'll look at the gun positioning and um, shooting and spawning in projectiles, sinking them over the network, all that fun stuff. Um, and then there will be a fourth and final part, and that will be using no Ray and Linode uh, to set up global multiplayer. So. If this tutorial was useful for you, be sure to drop a like and hit subscribe. We're getting pretty close to 100 subscribers, which is pretty cool. And I will see you guys in part three.